you're running about. In this last video of this lecture, we'll prove the main theorem of this section, which is that every PID is a UFD. So what does it mean to be a UFD? That means that every non-zero non-unit satisfies two things. It can be factored into a finite product of irreducible elements, and that factorization is unique up to associates. And we proved earlier in this lecture that in a PID, the first part holds, that if R is a PID, then every non-zero non-unit, little r, can be written as a finite product of irreducibles. So we just need to show this second part, that this factorization is unique up to associates. And the idea is to do induction on n, the number of irreducibles occurring in a factorization of r. The base case is a little funny. So if n is equal to 0, that means that r is a unit. So it's a product of a unit times no irreducibles. So it's a unit. And if you can write n, sorry, if you can write r as just a unit, we want to say that the number of irreducibles containing, contained in any factorization of R is 0. So let's suppose that we had a factorization of R that contained at least one unit. So if R equals Q times C, where Q is irreducible, and let's find a problem. So R is a unit, we know. So uh, let's multiply both sides by R inverse. So now we have 1 equals Q times C times R inverse. So Q is also a unit. And that's a contradiction because we said that Q was irreducible. So what have we seen? If n equals 0, if you can write R as a product of a unit times no irreducibles, so if R is a unit, then no irreducible occurs in any factorization of R. OK, so that's something that's worth checking carefully. Um, but it's true. It works how you would think. So what does this induction look like? Let's suppose that if R can be written as a product of at most n minus 1 irreducibles, then this factorization is unique up to associates. All right, so now what are we going to do? We're going to suppose that R is a product of n irreducibles, p1 up through pn, not necessarily distinct. And it's also a product of m irreducibles, q1 up through qm where these QIs are also not necessarily distinct irreducibles. And we're going to suppose that M is greater than or equal to N. So if not, we're going to switch them. We're just going to switch all of the Qs and all of the Ms. So our induction hypothesis tells us something about R that can be written as a product of at most N minus 1 irreducibles. So now we're going to write R as a product of N irreducibles and also as a product of m irreducibles, where m is going to be the larger one. And we already completely dealt with the case where n equals 0. So we really are going to assume that in each of these factorizations, we have at least one irreducible. So now our goal is to show that uh, these two factorizations, for one thing, that m is equal to n, and then that there is some way to rearrange the factors so that P1 is associated to Q1, P2 is associated to Q2, and so on. All right, so I'll pause and erase, and I'll show you how to use this induction hypothesis. Let's finish this proof. We have these two factorizations of R into products of irreducible elements. So now let's recall, in a PID, every irreducible is prime. So P1 is prime. And P1 divides this product, Q1 up through QM. So P1 has to divide QJ for some J. And now we can rename these factors, Q1 up through QM, if we have to. And let's just rename QJ to be Q1. Let's switch those two. And suppose that P1 divides Q1. So what does that mean? Q1 equals P1 times something. Let's call that something U, YU. Because we know Q1 is irreducible, so U is a unit. It doesn't actually matter all that much. But OK, so uh, Q1 equals U times P1, some unit. And 
so now what's true? P1 times 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 Pn is Q1 times 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 Qm. But Q1 is U times P1. So let's pull out this P1, just like we did in uh, an earlier proof in this lecture, and write this as P1 times U, U times Q2 up through Qm. And now R is an integral domain. So we can cancel out these P1s and see that P2 times 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 Pn is equal to U times Q2 times 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 Qm. And this is a product of n minus 1 irreducible elements in R. So by our induction hypothesis that is still here, if we have something that is a product of at most n minus 1 irreducibles, then that factorization is unique up to associates. That means you have n minus 1 factors, irreducible factors here. Here's another factorization. This also must have n minus 1 irreducible factors. So OK, now it is important that u is a unit because that doesn't count in our count for irreducible factors. So it's a unit. So what does that mean? Q2 times 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 Qm, this is a set of n minus 1 irreducibles. So that means that m has to equal n, that n minus 1 equals n minus 1, the number of irreducibles. On this side is n minus 1. On this side is n minus 1. They have to be the same. So if n minus 1 equals m minus 1, n equals m. And more than that is true. Once we rearrange now, we can rearrange the irreducibles here so that p2 is associate to q2, and p3 is associate to q3, and pn is associate to qm, n is equal to m. And we already know that p1 is associate to q1. So what have we seen? We've seen that in these factorizations, n equals m, p1 is associate to q1, and then p2 is associate to q2, up to pn associate to qn. We have proven that this factorization is unique up to associates. So we have this factorization of n irreducibles. We're just extending our induction hypothesis by 1. And that completes the proof that in a PID, not only can you take any non-zero non-unit element R and write it as a finite product of irreducible elements, but that factorization is unique up to associates. So remember, the big thing that makes this argument work is this clever idea of doing induction on the number of irreducibles occurring in some factorization of your element.